Hello and welcome to this beginner's guide to Trials of Heroes. Um, the guide will be very beginner orientated in the beginning uh, and then once we get into it of course I'm going to show you tips and tricks and strategies how to, on how to create a free-to-play account and still be competitive against uh, like medium spenders. I you probably won't be able to go up against whales, but, but medium spenders at least you should be able to compete with. So, once you get through the tutorial, which should take you a few minutes, um, you the first thing I would suggest is go in here and sign up with whatever. That will give you the trophy of signing up, uh, and that rewards you with an exorcist which is a very helpful hero to have in the beginning. So, once you do that, you click play, and the exorcist shows up in your backpack. So, to summon the exorcist, you... Of course, now I've already done it, so I can't really do it, but say that this was the exorcist, you click on that, and you click summon, and then it shows up in your hero list. This is the one I just summoned, and this is the exorcist. So, why is Exorcist helpful? He's helpful due to all the self-healing he has. Uh, first of all, when you level him up after 80, so tier 5, tier 5, um, he has a 100% chance to recover some health while, when being attacked, which is making him super tanky. Other than that, his active skill uh, deals damage against the enemy with the lowest health. That can be really useful and really fucking annoying depending on the situation. But regardless, he does heal the ally with the lowest health, which is always useful. Ah, actually, not always useful. We'll, you'll see situations where it annoys me as well. Anyhow, uh, one of the first things that you want to do when starting a new account is go up here click on redemption code and then enter the code late summer 2020. I've already used it so it's gonna tell me that I've already used it. Has been used. Um, but that rewards you with 10 heroic summon scrolls. Normally I would say save scrolls for events. We'll get into events in a bit but the 10 scrolls you just got I would advise you to just go in here and click the one that says summon 10 or something. Uh, right now I don't have 10 scrolls, so it doesn't have the same text. Here it's gonna, gonna cost me 2200 crystals. I would recommend you to never ever use crystals to do summons. Um, but right now I would say spend the summons. You might be lucky and pull a 5 star. Uh, even a shitty 5 star right now is still a 5 star and can be helpful. Um, so, the main reason for doing that 10 summon pull is that in the beginning you have this newbie boom. Um, <laughs> way to make us feel lousy about ourselves. Um, that has uh, these glory trophies and they are quite helpful because once you do 10 heroic summons you get an extra scroll and once you do 20 heroic summons you get a 5 star hero which get, makes 20 heroic summons guarantee that you get a 5 star and statistically I think the chance of pulling a 5 star from heroic summons scrolls is like 3% um, should be somewhere up here yeah chances to get a hero from heroic summon is 3.2% so roughly you should get a 5 star hero for every 30 summons you do. So you have a decent chance of getting a 5 star hero from the first 20 summons. So I would say just the first 20 summons, use them. You get them through, well, of course, this glory trophy rewards you with an extra. And then once you get into the campaign, um, up here, you, as you clear the stages, you get the occasional heroic summon scroll as well as... as in the campaign, you get heroic scrolls for certain uh, stages as well. So you will do those 20 summons in no time. Um, if you're really 
eager to do them as fast as possible, you can spend 750 crystals to, to buy those five, which will very quickly make you able to to do the 20 summons and get that free five-star hero. Um, and that really is helpful with that five-star hero. I was very unlucky, so I got the Purgatory Golem, which has, well, I guess decent damage against one enemy, but but other than that, he doesn't really do anything, and, and even that damage isn't very good. Um, like, 250% damage, that's fine, but his base damage is just super low, if I recall. Uh, let's have a look. Where is he? Useless fella. He's not even. Oh, there. We go. I'm blind apparently. So, 2310 as base attack. Let's see. Oh, that's a four star, of course. So, let's see this one. Yeah, 2700. If you were lucky, maybe pulling this one. Uh, 3200 in base attack, of course. That's not as much damage, uh, but he does poison them as well, and they receive damage, and he deals extra damage against poison, I think, maybe? Nah, he just does a lot of poison. Ah, the poison. Nah, never mind, he doesn't do any extra damage against poison, but still more useful than Purgatory Golem, in my opinion. So that's what you want to do from the get-go. Uh, the hero you should focus on in the beginning is Exorcist, for sure. Um, as I said, very helpful because he heals himself when he takes damage. So if we go to Dragon Island, for instance, and I give you an example, let's go against this one. Okay, I've battled against this one once and I only took away 50% health from one guy. Um, so basically I was obliterated in one round. Um, let's see how it goes now. Still, I'm still probably not gonna be able to to kill it in one go. But but now Exorcist has the self healing skill, so I should do better. Mm. Ouch! Nope, not at all. Yeah, I'm fucked. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take the best gear away from sorcerers to try and keep exorcist alive okay okay it, it does save their health so it, it's easier this time around but now exorcist should be able to survive those hits. Yeah, and back to... Okay, now they healed. That's very annoying. Ouch. Huh. Okay, this is proving to be a bigger challenge than I initially anticipate. Yeah, that was probably my mom texting. That's usually how it is. Okay, this was way harder than I anticipated. However, his self-healing is still very useful. Let's go into this one and see. I'll probably not be able to kill this wave, but at least it shows you how tanky he is. So see, every time he receives damage, he heals himself a bit. See, 2,000, 2,000, and that's what makes him very useful in the beginning because he's so hard to kill. As I said, I'm not going to be able to kill this wave because they just have too much healing and I don't have the damage output currently. Sorceress is my main damage dealer, but since she hits all targets for a bit of damage instead of one target with a massive amount, then it's kind of hard when they have so much healing. Actually, this is one of the one of the ways where Purgatory Golem could be useful. Still, his attack is, is low, so most likely he won't even be able to off one, but perhaps. 
Anyway, so this is how you get started. You proceed through the campaign hall and do the stages as fast as possible to maximize the passive resource gain. This experience, just to let you know, it doesn't count towards your hero's experience um, or level them up, them up in any way. It only counts towards your own experience up here. Um, what you do by by gaining levels is just unlock stuff. So now I still have yet to unlock this dungeon. I think it's called Ancient Ruin. Um, I still have yet to unlock that. Otherwise, I think I'm good in unlocking everything. Yeah. Um, but that's what it does. Also, it gives you certain rewards. So for instance, in this growth journey, you get some rewards for reaching level 40 and 50. And these orange items are very helpful in the beginning because you get so much extra extra health and attack so let's try and strip him and then you see his health and attack is like 11k and 2.3k that goes to 28k and 5.4 so really makes a huge difference um so that's what that's what gaining levels does when you get to level i think like 21 something like that you unlock the dark tower and then you start getting resources so for each level you defeat you get some gold and you get these soul stones that are quite valuable in the beginning you get those uh, every fifth level you get something extra i think uh from level five you get a hero then from level 10 you get some armor um, yeah, and then then every 25 levels you get a hero, um, and every 5 levels in between those you uh, gain a piece of armor. The heroes for level 5 and level 30, level 55 and level 80 will be 4 star heroes, and then once you get to level 105, so just 6 more to go here, then you will start getting 5 star heroes for every 25 levels, which is going to fill out your team with five star heroes quite quickly now i have five five star heroes and yeah just those six levels would would mean that i have a, a full five star team um not very good five stars um exorcist is good in the beginning sorcerer is, is good early to mid game kind of um end game she isn't isn't brilliant but not shit either these are quite quite bad so they will probably just be food for other heroes uh we'll get to what food means when uh, whenever we get that far that's basically when you want to fuse heroes so i'm actually this one stargazer you saw that i just have two of those right now it's in a championship formation so i can't select that but then you would put the two stargazers in here and then four random heroes from the same faction will which will then disappear so make sure to not put any valuable heroes in here then you fuse it and you power it up and it gets a better attack and is able to increase further in levels and stuff so that's one of the one of the things we'll get more into as we proceed other than that i would say go to the chat and just write something like yeah, like the based on add me please or add for hearts like that um let's send out a few requests um gaining friends in the beginning is not overly important but it, it does help you a bit uh ooh, requests already it was quick um so then you're able to send each other hearts and those hearts you spend in the summon hall um, and you spend them for friendship summons. Once again, not overly important. Uh, the chance of getting a five star hero is 0.8%. So this I'm mainly doing to get the four star heroes because you do get those every once in a while and you need eight four star heroes to fuse into a five star. So it does add up. You can get a total of 30 hearts every day. Um, so 
you can do three summons every day if you really manage your friends friend list personally i don't do that i don't even have the 30 friend limit cap yet uh because yeah i don't i don't feel like it's that important to to do so much about like i'll i'll probably look through my friend list once every week and see which ones have been offline for like several days uh here in the, the first day everyone's online and then once you hit a week or a few weeks then people start kind of to fall off and do other stuff maybe they don't like the game or maybe they go back to one of their main accounts i do have accounts on other servers as well um so then maybe they just skip this starter account and yeah don't do anything um last thing i want to mention in the beginning is try to get into a guild as early as possible that is going to help you a lot as well that's going to give you prop arguably the most valuable resource in the game um you go to the guild raid right now i'm performing terribly in the guild raid because i don't really have any good pve damage dealer um so i'm not ranked very well and i wasn't on this previous boss either wonder if i made the top 10 oh i was number six yeah <laughs> because there was not 10 players brilliant um but they give you those guild coins that you will use in these academy trees. Uh, we'll get back to that. So for now, just don't spend them. And in one of the next videos, I'll briefly go over uh, how to spend them and, uh, and why to not spend them in the shop unless it's absolutely crucial for your progress in one way or the other. I would argue that it is never crucial to your process, progress but then again it's really up to you out word of word of advice don't do it you will regret it that's one of the mistakes i made on on one of my first accounts that was to like just buy five star heroes i think i i ended up thinking that probably archbishop was a, a brilliant hero because he had healing for the entire team and and everything and then I spent 14,000 coins on that one and then and, and, yeah ended up regretting it as I told you so that's the last thing I want to mention in this uh, guide of course remember to level up your exorcist as much as possible while still having a damage dealer that is able to support you on those healer waves um, try to if you're struggling try to manage your armor um, and also try to read up on what the, the wave actually does. So, for instance, if you have a wave uh, consisting of these fellas, um, notice that... Oh, then he deals damage against all enemies. Which one is it? This one. Yeah, he deals damage against frontline enemies only. So, for instance, if you have a damage dealer that you want to stay alive for as long as possible, you put that on the backline because then it doesn't get hurt other than when they strike back and deal a bit of damage which is yeah basically nothing um that'll make your damage dealer stay alive if you know what the the opposite team is is doing so if you're struggling go in read their abilities figure out how to to place your damage dealer and your healer and, and you'll be fine for the first for the first many stages of the campaign hall it's really not that really not that difficult um so that's it for now. I'm gonna tune off and probably do another video maybe later today, maybe tomorrow. Um, this isn't really my my full time job. It's just uh, just a, a hobby because I want to try to get into like video editing stuff. Um, so I'll yeah post them as they as they come along. So um, have a good one and see you in the next one.